Hello, Choose Love friends. My name is Scarlett Lewis, and I'm the founder of the Jesse Lewis Choose Love Movement. Welcome back to another episode, another podcast of Choose Love. We're so happy to have you back. Today, I have an incredibly special guest. She's an incredible friend of mine, a dear, dear, precious friend. And she's also an incredible inspiration and model for overcoming um, for everyone. And her name is Dana Lysagang. She is the author of a, an incredible book called Falling Up, My Wild Ride from Victim to Kick-Ass Victory. Wow, what a title. Dana, welcome to the podcast. Thank you so much, Scarlett. Thank you for having me. It's an honor. Oh my gosh, it's my honor. Now, I, Dana and I met at a Wayne Dyer annual event, I think maybe five years ago now. Yeah. And uh, since then, we've become very dear friends. Uh, we both have a book that's published by Hay House. And so uh, we, along with also another dear friend, Kate McKinnon, who's also a friend of Choose Love and the author of Compassionate Touch. She's also the author of our Compassionate Touch Extension Program. Um, we went on a book tour across Canada, which was an amazing experience. And, um, and then, uh, we kind of went, uh, on our own separate journeys. I stayed with choose love. Um, you actually went back to school and, uh, and now here we are back again together. Dana is our choose love movement ambassador for the state of Colorado. Dana is also working with CLW superior teams. That is the name of our choose love workplace program. And uh, so it's just so amazing to have you here, Dana. And I, you know, your story is so incredible that I would really like it to come from your mouth instead of mine. Okay. Well, I'm happy to tell my story and help people grow with you. Yeah. You know, at the age of 19, I was in the United States Navy. I grew up as a tomboy. So it was just a natural progression for me to go into the military. And I was doing really well. I was six months in, having a good time. I loved wearing my uniform <laughs> and I was proud of my country. And you run into a bad apple every now and then. And I ran into a bad apple. And I don't know if he was a bad apple from for how long, but no one is starts out that mm-hmm. way. Mm-hmm. And so I hurt was, people, hurt people. Right. I was raped and thrown off a 75 foot cliff by this young man. He was 18 years old. And at 21 years post injury, uh, I was, well, I should tell you, I was uh, left at the bottom of that cliff for dead and broke my neck and became paralyzed from the neck down and have worked very, very hard over the last uh, almost 30 years. First, I started to work on just being able to breathe on my own. Mm. The doctors told my parents I wasn't going to live, that they had to come see me and say their goodbyes. Uh, when, when I woke up from a coma, I was on this respirator, and they were telling me I was going to live like that the rest of my life. And in God my damn. head, I was like, no way am I living like this the rest of my life. So I attempted to commit suicide on this respirator. And so that didn't work. (sighs) It's breathing for you. And so I was like, all right, well, I am not going to stay on this respirator. So I just kept biting on it and biting on it and biting on it. I annoyed the staff so much that they were like, all right, let's give her a chance. Because you can't talk when you're on a respirator. (laughs) You cannot talk. And it's yes, blink once for no or twice for no or and once for yes and it's always confusing and that everybody that comes in a visit and I gotta say I had the most amazing support team I had five out of six parents plus my brother sister and grandma show up and some of 
um, my third dad's friends and five and out of I, six parents. That's interesting to, to, yeah. Okay. I get that. <laughs> Took me yeah, a few I mean, minutes. I, I, had, to... <laughs> I had, I had six parents by the time I was 10 and that's a whole nother story. Yeah. That's in my book. If you want to know more about that. <laughs> And the the important part of this whole story is I never gave up and I just kept pushing forward and I am, and I can walk some now. And it took three years just to be able to learn how to dress myself, 10 years to take my first step. And I, I'm continuing to push forward and I will never give up because I know that in my heart, that part of my journey is the journey not not the recovery itself it is the recovering journey mm-hmm. and the steps that it took and eventually when i'm walking around free and clear of this wheelchair i can help others recover quicker get further faster than they would how and forgiveness at 21 years post injury mm-hmm. was a key point of my recovery I had to let go. I had to cut that cord, as you say, and I learned that from you. It was like a having the umbilical cord, and I was draining all of my power into this young man. Yes, and I figured out how to forgive by by before I met you, and I was like, "What happened to him?" Yeah, I still don't know, but you don't start out that way. He was popped up on drugs and alcohol at the time that that this happened. But what what hole inside of his heart was was not filled that he had to fill it with drugs and alcohol? Right. What was the the point of sadness that drove him towards substance abuse? And he went on to a life of crime and he eventually passed away um, in surgical complications that I am really not aware of that. But I called his mother and that's how I found out when I forgave him. I was going to go and say it to him. And that's when I found his obituary. So you so looked him up on the internet? Yeah. And you found that he had already died. So then you contacted his mom? Yeah. And and I offered her the forgiveness. And and she and I had a, a, a cry together. Mm-hmm. And she was like, I'm sorry. My son caused this family a lot of heartache. And what can I do for you? And I said, forgive yourself Mm. because parents blame themselves for what their children do or don't do. Mm -hmm. And give yourself grace. It's important that you know that I have a good life and I've lived well. And I gave her my name and I'm like, so she could Google me if she wanted to. Mm -hmm. And I haven't talked to her since. And I've just been on this journey with you since the last five years. And like you said, we, we kind of went our separate ways for a while. And I went back to college and I've been to different events that have helped open my eyes to, I really need to get back to the forgiveness and choose love. Because especially now in this time of chaos and anger, we need to really step back and choose love. Choose love for our fellow human. Choose love for the planet. Choose love in every area of our life for our family, our friends, and give each other the grace to make mistakes. Know that we've all got a skeleton or two that we wish we didn't have. Mm -hmm. And that choosing love for ourselves is the first step. And then choose love for others. And when you choose love for yourself, that's when you give yourself the forgiveness and the grace and you have the ability to move forward. Yeah, I think that, you know, with with everything that is happening in our world today, I, a couple weeks ago, I just, you know, seven years ago, I started this whole movement and I thought it was for a certain reason. I thought it was to keep kids safe in school because when you teach kids relationship skills, how to manage their emotions, how to be resilient and grow through difficulty that you're the incredible model for, how to make responsible decisions that cultivate safety from the inside out. And 
that's that was really my main goal. That was my message. And then the global pandemic hits. We have a brave new world is what I'm calling it. And we have all of this social unrest and everything that happens makes me realize even more, oh my God, I created this movement for now (laughs) because we need this now. We need to understand that we're all the same as human beings in the want and need to love and be loved. This has been our message from the beginning. We're all the same. We all feel pain and suffer. Hey, we're all susceptible to COVID-19. Yet we all want the same things in life. We're all the same. And the thing is, hatred is taught. And so is love. Hatred is contagious but so is love even more so. And so love is more contagious. it's more contagious. It's more powerful than hatred, but we need to all take responsibility for where we are in this world and become part of the solution, not slinging slurs and accusations at one another, but literally practicing choosing love in our own life. And when we do that, that ripples out to other people. And and we're not saying, you know, right now that you're always going to be able to, like, choose love every second, every minute, because I have my moments where I get angry and I I have to, I say something stupid. And then I'm like, oh, what did I, did did that just come from fear or love? Where am I Oh, by the way, me too. (laughs) Right. And you have to stop yourself and go, okay. I need to change that. In fact, just the other day, I I was I was going into a state park and and I didn't want to wait in line. I don't have to pay to go through the state park. I didn't want to wait in line for 30 minutes just for them to wave me through. And so I drove around and they saw, they saw me start to drive away and they run out and and the girls just she's like, "Well, you you need to go through anyway." I'm like, I, I, you would have just waved me through. Well, we need to know you're here. And then I did not choose love at that (laughs) moment. I was just like, I was just like, okay, whatever. I probably won't. And, and then, and I just kept on going and she was just like, and and I was like, wow. I sat there and I was throwing the ball for my dog into the lake. And I'm like, that was a real dick move. And, and then I, I got back in my van. I drove around back through to the window and I apologized for being a jerk Mm. and that I had no place in being a jerk right there. She was just doing Mm. her job. So it's how did she receive that? She was very grateful. She was like, thank you. And, and she's like, we're just doing our job and we're doing the best we can. And we know it's crazy. And, and I and I was like, yeah, you're right. And I, I I really apologize. So it's not always that you're always gonna make the right choices or the right choice at the moment. What is important is that you catch yeah. that and you go back and you apologize. No matter how much pride you have that might get hurt, go back and apologize for for something that you may have caught yourself doing. And maybe it's just you caught yourself having hateful thoughts. When you catch those, you're changing the vibration of your own person. You're cha- you're up leveling your own self because when you the quicker you catch it, eventually it's not going to be there. It's true. And what Choose Love, the program actually teaches, is to create a space between what's happening in your life and your response to it. So a lot of times something happens and you react right? But when you can create a space between what happens to you and your response, you can thoughtfully respond. And there's so much neuroscience behind this. You can use your prefrontal cortex where your logic and reasoning resign. You can take your reside. You can take your personal power back. And of course, we all want to thoughtfully respond to situations with our prefrontal cortex, unless we're running for our lives. Uh, you know, we want to have a thoughtful response. And so that is what 
the Choose Love programming teaches. That's one of the things that the Choose Love program teaches. And it's really vitally important. And I think also now the formula for choosing love is so important in this time. It starts with courage. And of course, it takes so much courage to stand up for what you believe in, uh, for what is right, to speak up and out. And we're seeing a lot of that courage, which is really just awesome. Uh, and then gratitude, gratitude for what we have um, and forgiveness. And you mentioned forgiveness and forgiveness was the most important part of my journey as well. And for a similar reason, if, you know, people say to me, oh my God, how could you forgive the man who murdered your son? And I, you know, for what I know with forgiveness, I have to say, how could I not? Because if I didn't, I would become another victim of Adam Lanza, the former student of Sandy Hook Elementary School. Uh, I would, I would be giving him control over my thoughts that impact my feelings, that impact my behavior, my relationships. I'd be his victim. I, I'm going to take my personal power back. I'm going to cut that cord that attaches me to pain through forgiveness. And, and I, I am not going to be a victim. I'm going to be a victor. And so that is what forgiveness gives us. And it is so vitally important. And, and, you know, even with what's going on now in our world, you see that there's a lot of room for forgiveness and, uh, and, and it's something that we have to learn. And in our society now, we don't normally teach it. We don't talk about it. Uh, and you know, we have these sayings that we say about forgiveness. Oh, forgive and forget. Like Dana, Dana, you should just There's forgive no and forget. Forgetting. Well, wait a minute. You wake up every morning and you have to put yourself into a wheelchair. You're not going to forget. And I wake right. up every morning without my son who would be, right. you know, 13 years old now died when he was six. I'm never going to forget that, that, that pain is with me all the time. So that is not what forgiveness is. It's not about condoning and saying what they did was okay. What that uh, young man did to you is never going to be okay. And you're not saying that it was when you forgive. But what you're doing is simply, and this is my new and improved definition for forgiveness, taking your personal power back. It is so powerful. It can change your life. And literally, I have met people that have heard the Choose Love message, and it has changed their life because they've been holding on to anger and pain, and they have continued to be a victim of something that somebody did to them decades before. And when they learn about forgiveness and then they're able to practice it, it's, it's a new life. It's, it's a new identity. You, that, that pain and anger becomes your identity. And so, and, and there's maybe even some fear like, okay, what's my gosh, what's my life going to be without it? Right. There's a lot of people that become addicted to that emotion and they don't know how to be mm -hmm. otherwise. And um, until they they get that light and they get the love in their heart and they see how much more they shine as a person, how much more they bring to their own life and their family's life and then to the world, it, it's the, the misconception kind of holds them back and then the fear of identity because we all have an identity and then we fear that change of identity because who am I right well for me if if I if I change myself from being a victim to being a victor going from victim to victory then then you become the winner of life you become the winner in every aspect because your heart becomes more whole and you're not constantly, and, and when we ha hold on to hate, we're holding on to toxins in our body causing unrest in our organs and our health. And the more hate we hold on to, we, we see that there's more issues physically. And I can absolutely speak from um, firsthand experience 
uh, when I was able to forgive my, I know this is a weird one, but when you become a quadriplegic, you lose control of your bowel and bladder. While I don't have perfect, perfect control of my bowel and bladder, I now have some function. So I was holding on to anger and hate in my in my abdominal region, in my colon. And once I let that go, I freed up. And I'm sure a lot of people out there can relate to having IBS. Mm -hmm. Oh my or, gosh, yes. You know, constipation or, I mean, like constipation is part of what you're holding on to. And, and I have noticed that, you know, when I have anxiety, then it's the other direction. And then you know, it's, yeah. There's a lot of our emotions that wrapped up into our physical organs. And when we choose love and we choose forgiveness, and again, I'm just going to reiterate, it is not condoning. Yeah. You are forgiving for yeah. yourself. It is the other person's uh, job to forgive themselves and their journey in their life. And when you take back that personal power, it, it's freedom. Forgiveness, in my opinion, I say forgiveness. I love freedom. that. I, I totally agree with that. And we've spent a lot of time on forgiveness because it's so vitally important. Uh, and you have to learn how to do it and you've got to practice it. So it starts with a choice. Even if you don't a hundred percent believe it, try it right. out, listeners, try it out. Okay. I want to take my personal power back. I don't want to continue to be angry about this. I feel the suffering in other areas of my life. So try it out. I'm going to make that choice. I don't a hundred percent understand how this happens, but I'm going to make that choice. And then by the way, it becomes a process because it's not something that you do once, right, Dana? <laughs> oh, absolutely not. You do it every yeah. day. It's, it's the fit until you make it kind of a thing. And once you finally actually make it that's where the that's right lies. once you realize okay i've made the choice and then i understand that things are going to come up things come up for me uh like well you know it, it's as simple as walking in the grocery store and seeing a mom walk with a what looks like a six-year-old boy with dark hair to me right or even a 13-year-old boy or mother's day comes or my birthday, uh, uh, Christmas, Jesse died around Christmas. I mean, there are all sorts of different things that happen. And, uh, and, and, and I, I have to forgive again. I, I feel the anger boiling up, but I know how to do, I know what to do. And it's, it's freeing. It is definitely, you're right. It is definitely freedom. It's, it's so important. And by the way, you can see, uh, and I'll say it again, with all of this social unrest, that there is a desperate need for the understanding of the power of forgiveness in our world today. There's definite need for that right now so that people can, I mean, there the news media seems to be portraying more violence in the protests than there are, and, uh, and that's the sensationalism. We need to focus on the peaceful protesters because there are more of them than there are the unrest. And it looks the other way just because there is those few that turn over the cart. And we need to find it in our hearts now. And through meditation, you can um, meditate on, I know it sounds cheesy, but you can meditate on world peace and it does help uplift humanity when you get heart coherence and brain heart and brain coherence that is a meditation that is really important and you can elevate humanity you can elevate it's been proven by monks many times it's been proven scientifically yes. many times power and power and yeah. meditation so if you think you have no power right now in what's going on you do and if you think that the only way is if through these protests you have power to send the elevated energy into that crowd from your home. Uh, yes. And then being the change that you want to see in the world uh, is really, really important. And starting with yourself and then it ripples out from there and then your family and then your community. Uh, it's really important. Choosing love is the only way we're going to get through this. I, I posted the other day 
that love is the only antivirus or the vaccine for the hate virus. Oh, wow. I love that. I love that. And it's true. (laughs) I mean, honestly, I don't know any other solution than the one that we are putting out there. Um, and, and it is teaching kids, but not just kids, but adults, but you can't force anything on anybody, but teaching kids that we're all the same in the want and need to love and be loved and teaching emotional management, how to identify, label, manage, and express emotions, uh, teaching them resilience, how to face difficulty in life and even grow through it, uh, how to make responsible decisions, teaching them how their brain works, um, how to have healthy and meaningful connections and relationships. All of these things we have to learn. And I think we it's it's vitally important now that this be our focus. Violence begets violence. Love begets love. Absolutely. Absolutely. And uh, yes, it's wow. That just, I mean, I love that. It just, it just kind of a pause there just to, to take that in because it is so important right now with everything that's going on in our world to come back to love and the fact that it is a choice and we do need some skills, tools, and awarenesses sometimes to make that choice. And that's what we teach in the Just Love Movement. And the reason that everything that we have, our our next generation lifespan programming is free is because I literally believe that this is a basic human right. These skills and tools are scientifically proven to benefit children's lives for the rest of their life, in every aspect of their life, physically, mentally, emotionally, in their families, in their communities, in their workplaces. And we know the importance of them. And we should not keep these skills and tools from anyone. Price should not be an option. Every child needs access. And, uh, and that's why I'm adamant that our programming remain free because it is just so vitally important. And then, so let's not, let's keep going in the formula. So the last, the last leg and Dana, by the way, you are a model for this whole formula. I'm going to go back Uh, and use you as a model for the formula for choosing love. But then we have compassion in action. And and compassion in action is really having the courage to step outside of everything that's going on in your own life. We all have our own lives, our own uh, anxieties, family stuff, (laughs) work, uh, (laughs) social media, everything, our own issues, to be able to step outside of that and help and serve others. That actually takes courage. But when we do that, we are making the world a better place. We're benefiting us too. Science tells us that we're benefiting us too. Uh, But we're also making the world a better place. And that is choosing love. And so when you summarize that formula, Dana, the incredible courage that you showed from going uh, 18 years old, flat on your back on a respirator, being told you're going to stay that way for the rest of your life, trying to commit suicide in that place, to the courage that it took to get to the place where you are now is just mind boggling, incredible. And then I know you and I know that you live every single day in gratitude. I know that you're grateful for everything and and small things and for even small improvements. We talked the other day about how you regained function of two fingers. Um, Was this a couple years ago? And you started, you just couldn't believe it. I mean, you were so grateful for the function of two fingers. I mean, let's take a moment to to think about that. Uh, incredible. And then we've talked a lot about forgiveness 
and then uh, how you really have a goal and a mission in life that is so much larger than yourself. I mean, even to share, even to write your book, Falling Up, My Wild Ride from Victim to Kick-Ass Victory was an attempt to share your story with the world and what you've learned and how you overcame and, and to put yourself out there as a model. Because if you can do that, think about what we can do in our own lives. And we are able-bodied we have our two feet. We have, we can use our hands. So that was, uh, you know, talk about compassion in action, putting yourself out there. And that takes courage, by the way. You stepped outside of everything that you have going on to help the world. And then also, I want to acknowledge stepping up to uh, above and beyond all that you've already done to volunteer to become a choose love movement ambassador. So helping to spread the movement within the whole state of Colorado, and then also stepping up to work for our workplace um, program is really incredible. And we are so grateful for you and for your presence with us and for everything that you put out into the world. Thank you. I, I appreciate that. And it's definitely, it's an honor and a gift in my life to be able to be involved in this. And, and I got off track for a little while and I, and I'm blessed that I'm coming back on board to the Choose Love movement. And it took a few derailments to see that I, I have that gift to be a beacon of love, a beacon of light. And once I saw it within myself, I could start spreading it. Well, and I think we get off track sometimes when we become too focused with the self, too focused with our own. A little too egocentric. You know, our own success. Uh, and maybe even it stems from a little bit of fear. Uh, and the amazing thing is, when you have the courage to look beyond yourself, when you start thinking in terms of having a goal that's an ambition in your life that's larger than yourself, all of a sudden you see things open up for you, right? And and it makes you it makes you less anxious. It seems like it would be the opposite, but it's not. It makes you less anxious. It makes you more confident. It makes you more outgoing, more sure of yourself. And I mean, it all goes back to science. Science says when you step outside yourself and you do for others, it makes you happier. I mean, there's brain science that, that says that it, it helps you connect with other people. I mean, there's even studies that show a 22% reduction in mortality. When you do for others, there, there is a whole list of scientific research that shows the benefits of doing for others. And so it feels good. It feels good. <laughs> it feels good. And it didn't feel good. I, you know, you talk about the fear and I know a lot of us fear what our family is going to think and what our friends are going to think. And part of the fears that I was having was I had family members stop speaking to me while I was writing my book. They're speaking to me now. And then I have another family member who is not speaking to me right now. And that has actually been an incredible gift because I realized between those three people that stopped speaking to me in those periods of time that it doesn't really matter what they think. What matters is that I choose the love. What matters is that I know why I wrote the book. What matters is I am out to help other people. And it has it has nothing to do with them at all. It has to do with being a source of hope and being a light to other people who are in the dark. That's beautiful, Dana. And at the same time, them not speaking to you is not about you. It's about right. their issues. And by the way, I've had the same thing. You know, I've had a family member that uh, uh, we didn't speak to each other for a couple of months over an argument, by the way, or, or a disagreement over the definition of forgiveness. <laughs> Honest. Okay. I know uh, I, you can't make stuff up like that, but you know, what I began to realize was that it's not about me. That's about them. Right. 
and their issues. And, and I can't take that on. And it's not something that I'm, I'm able to, to resolve for them. They'll have to resolve. And I'm not going to take responsibility for that. Um, and it's okay to step back and step back in love. You can still hold them in your heart with love and let them go through what they're going through. It is the family members that are closest to us that are going to be our biggest critics. And, and when we understand that we can love them anyway, we can step back from that. And like the family member that is, that are not speaking to me right now, I love with all my heart and soul. And I also know that there's hurt inside of them. And I, I will full on take responsibility for some, for the part that I played and I can apologize and I can forgive and I can move forward. And if they choose not to that, I can't force that. When they come to that junction, then I will be here waiting with open arms. Yeah. And that's social emotional intelligence, right? Part of it. Yeah. Yeah, Not taking on the blame and not retaliating in anger and not escalating. Yeah. They can't argue with love. Yes. Yes. Everything comes back to love. And I think that that's just a really important thing for us to remember. I'm so glad that you came back to choose love. And Me oh too. my gosh, Dana, I love you so much. And we could, obviously we could talk forever, but I'm, I'm so, I just wanted to introduce you to our following and, uh, and also your position as our choose love movement ambassador for Colorado. Um, by the time this podcast airs, we will have had the first in our series of webinars that we're giving. Um, and, we're going to be talking about this, but so much more. We're going to have some special guests. And this is just the tip of the iceberg of the message that we're going to continue to spread together. So I just want to thank you so much for sharing your story and your courage with us, Dana. I encourage everyone that's listening to run out and, and uh, actually it wouldn't be running out anymore, right? It would be go to your computer (laughs) and, and, uh, and order falling up my wild ride from victim to kick ass victory and uh, read the book, gain inspiration. And, um, you know, Dana has shared her story about how she came to choose love and why she thinks it's so important. And, uh, you know, we encourage other people as well across the country to become uh, advocates and ambassadors for choose love. This is the very definition of a movement. Um, it's this, we spread this by word of mouth and bring this to your community because it is so desperately needed now, not just for safe schools, cause it cultivates safety from the inside out of every child. Um, but also to help facilitate relationships and connections among people and to reduce fear and anxiety. Uh, Of course, it does that when you choose love. And so we want everybody to have that choice. So I welcome everybody to check out our website, chooselovemovement.org. Everything that you'll find there is no cost. And we have programming for the lifespan, actually, infant, toddler, prenatal, pre-K through 12th grade. Uh, We have programming for homes and schools. Make sure your school has a comprehensive social emotional learning program that is taught with fidelity. That means embraced by all because it is the number one way to have a safe school. And when your kids, when and if your kids go back to school they are going to need social and emotional learning. This is something that we're not born with. We have to learn. And I believe that it's a basic human right. And that's why everything that we have is no cost. And it will uh, most definitely create a safer, more peaceful and loving world. And it's going to take every single one of us taking responsibility for what's going on in our world. And 
uh, stepping up to the plate and literally doing their part. Um, so we invite everyone to be part of the movement. We're all the same in the want and need to love and be loved. We all have that in common. Uh, and everyone can choose love. So uh, thank you so much, Dana. Uh, I love you so much. Love you. <laughs> I'm so grateful for you. And uh, we will see everyone next time. Thank you for choosing love. It's all part of us. We can all choose love. It'll lift you up if you let it in. Let the healing. Thanks for listening to the Choose Love podcast. Our positive, empowering messaging is reaching millions of people all over the planet. Join the worldwide movement to choose love. Our programming is in over 10,000 schools, homes, and communities across the country, in every state, and over 112 countries and counting. We are giving individuals of all ages the essential life skills they need to flourish. You can be part of the solution, too. We have sponsorship opportunities available that help support us and enable you to share in helping create a safer, more peaceful, and loving world. Contact me on our website, chooselovemovement.org.